Oh, Scott might actually straight up win this one. He's actually learning how to play Civ, so I can't just sort of ignore him at this point. So he basically spent most of the game building a large military. And I don't think I can fight this off, so we'll see how it goes. But he has learned how to play this game a little bit, which will bode well in future ones. I've been kind of ignoring him up to this point. So I guess I'll have to play this war as best I can, Advance War style. Because like I said, if he attacked me with a moderate force, I probably would have been okay. He's got more forces than I'd necessarily expected, but I think this is pretty much the extent of his army. So these guys shouldn't be able to shoot in yet. So I actually, I think I might keep this guy here. Uh, or I'll move him up here. But pretty much, it's interesting he's going after Memphis more, for the, more so than my pretty much undefended capital. So I've just got to do as much damage to his units as possible to prevent him from actually being able to take the city. First things first, I want to preserve this swordsman. So let's get him somewhere out of the way to hide. I don't want him to be in range of these knights or anything. I don't want him to go into the city. So let's have him run all the way up here into this swamp. And then move toward Heliopolis to heal. This guy and this guy. Let's see. I'll ignore those barbarians for now. I want to get this range guy over here to start attacking this stuff. So maybe I'll get rid of this scout here first. Well, it's a warrior, but it's acting like a scout. I can take it out. Yeah, it'll take me about three turns. Trouble is, I'm very unhappy because I took a gamble, assumed that he wouldn't attack right away. Uh, this great engineer is not going to help me that much. And I figured if he didn't attack me for like 10 or 15 more turns, I could get myself to a much more stable position. So he has learned. Let's see. First things first. Let's see what I can do with this great engineer. I don't have that many wonders. None of these will really help me with the... Actually, the Great Wall would help to a significant degree. Now, while I'd like to finish that Spearman first, see what happens here. Great Wall. So the Great Wall will finish, slowing him down a little bit. And I've got two Great Generals, so now... What do I do here? This catapult shouldn't be able to attack that catapult yet. But that means that catapult can't attack the city yet. Catapults aren't actually that great at this stage in the game. They'd be better if I upgraded them to trebuchets. So, let's see. I think I can ignore that catapult for now. I want to focus on weakening these guys. Now see, this guy, this guy, it partly depends on where they are. There's a lot of factors there. I want to hit the weakest guy and just weaken him enough. Uh, I'd like to go after this, but I don't think I can do enough damage to go into the Spearman and take it. So I'm going to go after this guy. I just have to do as much damage per turn and just hold out. Yeah, see, this won't do nearly as much damage. Partly because of this unhappiness here. I can probably build a Circus Max. So basically I'll finish, I'll let the Great Wall finish, because that might say that might help me. Then I'll shift into the Spearman, because it'll be done in one turn. And then I'm going to immediately after that build a Circus. As for these guys, he'll have to move them into the forest to attack me. So I think this guy's actually better off staying here. And I don't think he has any units off this way. Let's be sure. I don't have a movement to go see. I want to leave this guy here because that'll keep my unhappiness down. I will actually move this swordsman up this way to prepare to come in from the back. This horseman is interesting. He can't do a lot of damage yet. If I could sneak him around, I could start pillaging Scott's shit back here, which might slow him down. I don't know how many horse resources he has. Now, maybe I can figure that out. Let's look at the diplomacy. Horses, two. So he's got two available. He might have a pasture on that one. He's got a pasture on this one. I think that's all his horses. So if I could get this guy to sneak all the way around and just start pillaging the shit around Shanghai... There's no way he has military units back there. But that's a risk, because this horseman could be very useful in slipping around to finish off a weakened guy. Because horsemen are not that weak. I mean, look how much damage he would do, even to that knight, even despite being unhappy. 
It's partly because I've got the Great General flanking, uh, adjacent friendly unit, all that stuff stacks. But I kind of want this guy to hold out here for now. I want the Great General. To, uh, I would say I got to figure out what to do with this guy. Do I attack here or do I start moving around that way? If I go here, I can really only strike here. If I stay here, I can really still only strike here. But this guy and I won't easily be able to move in. This guy is not doing well, but I'd like him to do the most damage as possible. So rather than attacking... You can see he'll lose a lot of his health if he attacks, and he can't finish anyone off. So instead, I want him to just hunker down and be ready to do damage. Great General might be fine here for now, but if I move him closer... Then... Depending on what Scott does with this great general, because he's probably thinking about building a citadel here. So if he does that, then it's good and bad. It's bad because he's got a stupid citadel here. It's good because then I could actually just move my great general here and make a counter citadel. And further, my city can actually bombard the contents of the citadel, minimizing its effectiveness. He won't be able to easily get a siege unit into it. So here's an alternate timeline. We can play with this a little bit to show you the different outcomes of battle. Now, this guy can't actually get to this catapult in one round, so there's no point in attacking that catapult. But I suspect Scott might want to build a citadel here. So, what I can do instead... Because while I'll do more damage to this guy, who's already a little wounded... I want to weaken the guy who's going to be in the Citadel, so I can hopefully force him to move his Great General, and basically make the Citadel less attractive. Now this guy, again, look, I can do decent damage, I don't want to do that, I am just going to fortify here. Because he'll have to deal with this, so he'll have to attack it, and he'll take reasonable losses. He could destroy this unit if he wanted to. This guy's still got to get out of the way to heal somewhere. I'll go back here. Eh. If I go here, I'm safer. But then I won't heal as fast. I won't be in my own territory. But if I go here, his knight... No, the knight will have to stop going over the water. Knight has to go over the water either way. So I'm going to go here. Now, I could leave this guy here. This guy, like, I, like before, I'm going to move him up. So I'll be ready. And I am going to change this to the Great Wall. Free social policy. Now, I could build the Oracle in one turn instead of the Great Wall. And then I'd get basically two social policies in quick succession. None of these help me that much in a war. And none of these will get me happiness quickly, so there's no point in doing that. So instead, I will do the plan like I did in the first timeline. As much as I like to build a manufactory, which, if Scott didn't declare war on me, that's what I would have done, I am going to finish the Great Wall. 